All right, so it is officially opening weekend boat season for me up here in North Florida. Florida has three zones. Uh, actually, it might be four. I think it's four. I don't know. Either way, they've got several zones, and it just opened yesterday here. And I have uh, with, uh, two bucks coming in that Taylor lovingly named Bert and Ernie. And uh, Bert is a young eight tall tight. He is a good deer. He will be big next year. But Ernie is our target buck of the evening. He has been showing up religiously at seven to eight o'clock, right before dark. Um, I put up a feeder here over the summer. Um, got them coming in. I, I, I only have like two or three acres of hunt here, so I need to put something to draw them in um, this time of year. Uh, during the fall, uh, they kind of come through here a lot more. There's less acorns and there's more food over here for them. Um, just natural browse and uh, some of the stuff in the pastures and everything. But that being said, yesterday was technically opening day and I got mandatory overtime. So I was sitting uh, at the station and of course, like clockwork, Bert and Ernie were in there. Like I said, they've been pretty steady coming in at that seven o'clock and randomly they'll come in in the morning and then literally today I got home, uh, I was doing a bunch of stuff here in the shop and I got a picture of both of them and a four point with them this time at 11.45 in the morning, which was about a thousand degrees this time of year. So why are these deer under feet moving, you know, in the middle of the day? These Florida deer are weird. Um, like I said, I've been used to hunting the Midwest now a lot lately, and it seems like when it's cold, there's never a deer, uh, and when it's hot here, they're moving all around. So they're just used to it, I guess, like I am. So let's go get it done on the first hunt. I've never gone and sat the first sit and got it done, especially on a target buck, because I've really only been targeting bucks for the past year. So we can go do it, get it done, stick with us. So I have the welcoming committee over here. Right there. Look like at this little tough guy. What are you doing, tough guy? What are you doing, tough guy? Uh, so like I said, the deer are used to this. I'll be sitting in there and these dogs will be running around behind me, but as long as they're not around, the deer are fine with it. They can hear barking, it's not a big deal. Right? Um, they're just announcing to them. That I swear, Shifty last year knew I was here, probably because of this. All right, y'all, so we are nestled up in here finally i put the stand up probably three months ago and uh, i want to get it up early this is the field last year and i got permission to hunt on this side so where i shot shifty last year it's just on the other side of the woods that i was hunting and a lot of the bucks funnel from probably 400 yards over that way it's a big bedding area so totally secluded totally protected they come across this field or they work these wood lines and come out and they funnel all through here. So I put a feeder up over here just because I need something to draw these deer over here, especially early season. All the acorns literally start dropping like the week before season starts every year like clockwork. And the cameras went dead for that week and now they're all back. Ernie is the one we're in here after. So Taylor Dana Burton, and Ernie, she's like, oh, one's tall, one's short and fat. So, um, which Ernie is fat and he has a wide rack. So for a Florida deer, he is good. I try to hunt the wind here. I made a path through the woods to my left about 40 yards is a strip of woods. And that's where Shifty came through and where I shot him at. So I could cross there, it'd be easy to cross. But if those bucks come from that way, they can smell my scent. There's old fences and stuff in the woods right here behind me. And I don't think they're gonna come through that way because why would they when they could walk on the field edges? So if I come in and out that way, it doesn't put my scent anywhere. I've got the wind blowing in my face perfect, you know. But I thought of, you know, I sit and think about it a lot that these are more of your suburban deer, right? You got the urban guys that do it more in the city. They have it probably even more so than I do, but these deer are used to people and they're used to human scent. So I don't know if a bigger buck did wind you if he'd be gone forever. You know, he might be gone for now, just, you know, that day. Um, it's like I said, it's, it's not uncommon for them to smell people. Um, they'll ease off, maybe come back the next day. You just never know. So I'm trying to slowly figure these deer out. Last time it took me 30 sets. Hopefully this time it only takes one. We'll see. I'm up here. I'm sweating my ass off, but it's hunting season. I'm excited.
actually looked like Bert. But he had that little four point with him and that four point was with the two of them earlier at 11.30 this morning. There was three of them. And I just saw that little four point for a split second and the woods kind of like dip in and around. I'm hoping that Ernie has stayed on that woods line. I don't know why, like Bert was, you know, he's a younger deer so he's gonna come across. So of course, Ernie should stay in the woods as long as he can and then come out, I'm assuming, so. Y'all, that deer came out of nowhere, literally the opposite way I expected it to. When I hung this stand, I did it three months ago, and I meant to come back here and angle a little bit, and of course he came out to my right. So I'm twisted over in this stand, and literally I'm resting, and as I shot, my foot slipped off, and I shot high. I hate, hate, hate that. It's been years since I've done it. I hate to have an animal suffer. Put one in him as fast as I could. Got that second shot in there, and he's done now. Just, guys, that's part of hunting. If you're gonna bow hunt, that's gonna happen to you at some point, so. I know sometimes a lot of guys won't put that on film, but you need to see that, because not every shot's gonna be perfect. You know, that was a 32-yard shot. That's a chip shot for this, but it's just, who knows what happens that buck fever kicks in and like I said I thought I had a good footing it sucked man first sit the first time I've ever come in and had a target buck and got him the first friggin sit I'm excited <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a little composed here um, we're gonna get down I mean this is a good deer for this area and uh, he's about the most mature deer I have on camera here, that one that first came in with him. Great buck, he is going to be a stud down the road, guys. So, we're gonna hop down here in a little bit. It's gonna give him plenty of time. Like I said, he's right there, I see him, he's done. But, uh, you know how that goes, just let him, let him be done. All right, y'all. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, this self-filming is addicting. It's so much harder, it's so much more work. It flusters you making sure that you have all the, the cameras on. Like, I meant to turn the GoPro on and I hit the wrong button, it didn't turn the GoPro on, but this camera was on. So, thanks to my Florida camo. First uh, deer I've killed with this, uh, they had no idea I was there. It's the hammock pattern. Look at that spot. Money. And, it's like I said, I hate shooting them in the spot like that, but it makes for a minimal track job. So I can see my knock blinking. Oh yeah. That y'all is a big old Florida buck. Look at that guy. So as y'all can see here, the weeds are extremely tall, uh, but makes it a little more challenging to kind of angle that shot. But um, 
This deer is nice, wide, tall, love it. So I'm gonna drag him out so we can get a little better view of him. All right, y'all, mosquitoes are coming, of course. So that right there is just a beautiful deer for this area. Nice, wide, tall. So it's just nice when it pays off. We put in so much work over here, putting these feeders out, keeping them full. I put protein feeder, I built that one, if you go check out that video. So I've been feeding them Purina 21% protein and I think it helped a little bit, what do you think? He is the biggest one I've got on camera as of late. There's a couple pretty good ones too that I uh, had early season, but they've disappeared. So it's early. We have plenty of opportunity. Uh, we can get it done. We're going to get him drug out. I got my dad coming over to help. And uh, thanks for watching, y'all.